Hey everybody, welcome to the Verdigree Table. My name is Ryan Doyle and I am super excited to talk about the latest adventure I've cooked up for you. It's up on the DMs Guild right now and as usual I put the entire thing in the preview so you can get access to all of it then and there. If you do have a few dollars to invest in an independent content creator like myself, amazing. Thank you, I deeply appreciate it. It keeps the lights on and the hits coming. But again, I'm putting the entire work in the preview so you can get it. I Either way. I'm not going to do a full walkthrough on this one, but you can check it out and follow along while I try to keep this at least a little snappy. Because before I even get into the adventure itself, I want to tell you about the other thing this little PDF is built to do. I set out to build a plot hook delivery system so that any dungeon master can take this easily, drop it into their game world, and launch their next big campaign from it. Or, and I really like this style, you could connect it to multiple different modules or adventure paths or dungeon locations, whatever, even whole settings. The possibilities are pretty much limitless and I provide you with a ton of ways to form links with other content and hopefully inspire you to create your own as well. You can set all of that aside though and still have a great little one shot, but that Swiss army knife of interconnectivity is what makes this one extra special. The adventure itself, the sealed Tower of Rydal, the exceedingly clever, is built for level 3, and it should last a single session. Your mileage may vary, but this should be one session. And it is all about just clearing this abandoned wizard's tower. I have had a lot of fun running this one in the past, and I've packed so much into these 10 pages to share with you this time around. First, we get Penelope, an NPC for all seasons. She sells potions, she's a mage, she's a wizard, and, she, and she's sending our heroes on this very quest. She can stack a ton of other functions for your game as well, including ultimately becoming the party's type of patron. Check her out in detail and adapt her, make her your own. The important thing for this adventure though is that Penelope, or Penny to her friends, is about to get married and is in the market for a new home. Right now she lives with her fiance, a divination wizard by the way, another very useful tool in the DM toolbox to drop into your game. Um, but right now they're living in the old windmill in the back of the DMG and Penny has had her eyes on that abandoned wizard tower just outside of town for a little while now. And when the player characters start trying to bargain over potion prices, which they almost definitely will, right? It's, it's a guarantee in all the games that I've been in at least. If and when they enter into negotiations, Penelope will offer up her entire inventory if the party agrees to go clear out the Tower of Rydal for her. I made a nice little 2d6 table so you can see what she's got on hand every time she's encountered, her inventory can change, or you can just go and select a few potions from the list or add your own. When the quest is accepted, adventure ensues, and if our heroes manage to make it past the gargoyles and through the sealed front door, one of the first things they'll see is a treasure chest front and center that the old resident was apparently using for a coffee table. If and obviously when they open it, there is nothing inside but an explosive glyph of wording. Talk about starting things off with a bang. Don't worry, someone will probably make their save, right? Or be outside of the uh, blast radius, right? Or 5d8 thunder damage at level 3 might mean plan B, Penny, follow them up this hill and administer some healing potions to prevent a TPK. See? Function stacking. <laughs> Check this out, I made before and after maps, if and when the bomb goes off. I made a ton of maps for this one. There's one for every floor with a grid version and without a grid. I also made a set for the exterior plus a night version of that, just, you know, just in case. I'm also including, for good measure, a smaller resolution version of the gridded ones if you're trying to upload them to like a virtual tabletop or share them online somehow because these are pretty big files. Now maybe that glyph of wording feels a little unfair for level 3 for you and that's okay if you decide to, you can nerf it to 3d8 or 2d8 damage, but they broke into a wizard's tower and detect magic is only a first level spell after all. 
Rydal was also using this chest to protect the hidden trapped door that leads down to the basement and the teleportation circles down there. If you want to add some fast travel and blow your campaign wide open, boop, it's there for you. Don't worry though, because there's a shield guardian down there, so the PCs probably won't manage that the first time they see it. A little crazy, right? Change it if you want to, but ooh, it's a blast to run. As the PCs make their way up the tower, they're getting attacked by animated armor and flying swords and a rug of smothering, maybe my favorite. There's also an animated broom and like a duster going around cleaning and they don't want to battle, but they'll fight if the PCs start something. The whole time, there's also opportunities to reward exploration with plot hooks and story seeds, as well as a bunch of treasure. I've built a roll table for spells to find on scrolls and in spell books and another with D20 book titles if you don't want to drop more lore and world building and the players are picking up their, you know, 12th book off the shelf. There's a few other magic items at the very top of this as well as a telescope worth a thousand gold pieces if the players think to grab it. Now by its very nature, this layout does feel very linear. Uh, there are a few secret rooms uh, on top of the optional basement and I placed a window at the very top of the tower so there's a chance they'll go through this whole thing backwards, which seems unlikely unless they totally strike out getting through that front door. Like I said, it's a fun little adventure that can inject a whole lot into a campaign, whether you want to lay tracks to the next big thing or populate out a sandbox. For example, say the party is on their way back from the Sunless Citadel and they meet Penelope gathering herbs in the wilderness or she's traveling on the road or she's selling potions in the market square back in town. She sends them on to Rydal's tower and as they work their way through, you're paving the way for the Forge of Fury. There's a note from a colleague asking Rydal about his research into Kundrakar. On the desk is a scroll bearing a map to the Stone Tooth. And on a bookshelf, there's a biography of Durgadin the Black. Upstairs, we've got a jeweled dagger bearing Durgadin's smith's mark in a secret room hidden behind a tapestry, which depicts like the final battle of the Glitterheim in epic detail. And at the very top of this place, we find Rydal's journal on his nightstand and the final entry states he's heading off to find the Forge of Fury. That's, that's six signposts pointing in the same direction, and there's room for you to slot in more if you want. But if the players are remotely dialed in, they're going. Eventually, they may even find right all right as a prisoner or as a corpse or a ghost during that next adventure. Alternatively, you could take all of those hooks and tie them to different scenarios. Now we've got a sandbox, baby. You wanna take the emergent play factor even further, you can do what I did. Put Penelope on the integrated encounter tables. These are also on the DMs Guild and have videos on this channel describing them. So when the party maybe spent the night in town and are traveling back to the Sunless Citadel for another round of dungeon delving and somebody rolls an 11 on the random encounter check, Everyone's sitting there braced for twig blights or something, and here comes our young wizard with potions of healing and some more powerful stuff, too, that she's willing to sell. Somebody gets cute, inevitably, and tries to make a deal, and now all of a sudden we're off on this side quest that's actually setting the stage for the next three levels of play. That's the good stuff for me. It takes a little bit more prep up front, but it makes the whole game feel alive and like anything can happen on both sides of the DM screen. So check this one out, whether you're using micro crazy style or just running it clean as a one shot. And if you do, please, please, please come back and let me know how it goes. As a review on the Dungeon Masters Guild in the comments of this video, like and subscribe by the way for more great stuff. If you enjoyed this, send me an email, contact me on my website, reach out on the socials, however you feel comfortable. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me stories of how this went at your table, even if you stripped it down and used it for parts, especially if you stripped it down and used it for parts. Thanks so much for watching this one through. Get out there, have fun, be kind. Uh, don't trust that treasure chest in the wizard's tower and I will see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.